Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you, as is usual. So for this one, we're going to head back to Brewdog up in Ellen in Aberdeenshire, and we're going to do number four of four in the Unleash the Yeast 2013 range. So the final beer for me to review in this series is the Pills and Lager. Remember, the other three beers that I've reviewed for you already were the American Ale, then the Bavarian Weizen, and the Belgian Trappist. So as is usual then with my beer reviews, I'll take you through a brief history of the brewery, very, very short, because I've done a number of Brewdog beer reviews for you as well, just about two minutes or so will do, but as always if you are simply interested in the tasting of this beer, just fast forward a couple of minutes into the video and you will catch that, and as always the brewery website's in the video description for you below, along with the link to my other Brewdog beer reviews. I believe there's about 40 or so of them now and there will be many more to come, so subscribe to the channel if you're particularly interested in Brewdog beer. I'm sort of catching up with my stockpile right now. But anyway, Brewdog were founded back in 2007 by James Watt and Martin Dickey. And since then it's really grown to become the sort of flag carrier of Scottish craft brewing if you like. And uh, these guys export all across the world these days, Australia, New Zealand, probably down in South Africa as well, all throughout Europe. I've seen them in Estonia, you can get them in South America and in the United States and Canada of course as well. So they've grown massively since this very early stage in 2007. In 2012 they moved to their new purpose built facility in Ellen Aberdeenshire so they expanded their capacity massively there. And what's really cool about this brewery is that they are very very experimental you know pretty much any type of beer you can think of uh, in your sort of mind of craft beer if you like these guys will have done it at some point in their history they tend to have a, a core range of beers if you like that are about eight different beers and then all of their other beers are sort of random and occasional brews and things like that and that is in fact one of the only downsides of Brewdog is that they produce so much good beer but some of it and a lot of it actually you will only see once so you need to buy up their beers as you go and hopefully I'm reviewing most of these for you on this channel anyway. But what, as I say with these, with this brewery, what is really cool with these guys as well is that you can actually buy into the brewery and get discounts in the shop and the bars and stuff like that. So you can use the equity for punk scheme and this is what they used to sort of uh, fund their move to their brand new facility in Ellen and it's, it's a really massive cool facility actually. And the equity for punk scheme, you can go onto it on their website and they have different intakes of this thing and you just buy a different level of shareholding and then you get a bigger discount the more you buy obviously. So very, very cool in that way. But they're very well known for listening to their fans and you might have heard of the mash tag beers and this is a beer essentially where what they do is they have a couple of rounds of voting on Twitter so you know first you'll, uh, you'll choose a base style then within that base style you will choose another style a particular red ale or brown or type of brown ale or whatever then you'll choose the hop base the malt base and then the twist that goes in the beer as well and you also get to vote for the beer label as well so if you've seen my mash tag reviews you'll see me talking about that a little more but very very cool brewery this because they they really do listen to their fans and they've got a whole host of brew pubs all over the place now. These started opening in Aberdeen in 2009 in Scotland. That's their home bar. The following year they moved down into Glasgow and Edinburgh and also opened up their first bar in London and since then they've got a whole host of these things in England now in pretty much all the major cities. They've got two in Sweden, one in Stockholm, one in Gothenburg. They've just opened up a new one in Firenze in Italy as well. They're planning to open one up in Rome, uh, Barcelona I think, Brussels and Paris as well. Berlin Berlin's also on the map and they also have bars in uh, Roppongi in Tokyo and Japan and also in Sao Paulo in Brazil so the people still down at the World Cup will be having a blast in Sao Paulo anyway. So that's your sort of brief history of the Brewdog Brewery there. I hope you've enjoyed that, but we'll get on to the tasting of this beer now. But as I've mentioned to you in the other reviews that I've done of this brewery, what the I or the other beers in this series rather, what the idea the idea behind this series is essentially to allow you to get the, the idea of how the different yeast strains can affect the beer. These beers are all the same base beer and they're basically fermented with a different type of yeast essentially. So all of the beers have a hop blend of Centennial and Amarillo hops and the malt base is Paleo, Munich and Caramel. So the same base beer, just a different, just fermented with a different yeast strain in the brew. So very, very cool in this way. And what I've noticed with this series before is that they do actually tend to have all of the flavour elements, but the yeast character and bready character is a hell of a lot more pronounced. So a lot of these typical flavours that you get from these, that the beer is actually named after, is rather... Um, 
less pronounced, if you like, but it is there. And a lot of people have criticised these beers for it, but I think it's exactly what they're going for here. But anyway, this guy is a 6.3% Pilsner or Imperial Pilsner. I'm not sure exactly where the cutoff on the ABV of that is, but I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the artwork on this one here. It's the standard sort of Brewdog artwork there. And as I've mentioned to you with these four pack beers that you get from Brewdog, normally the crest is sort of over in the corner here, but in the four pack ones, it's in the center. This guy is a 6.3% sort of Pilsner beer. I think it's a Czech Pilsner. And I'll just read out the blurb as I always like to do with the Brewdog beers. Always read the blurb on the beers before you actually drink them. But this one is the same as the other ones. It's time, it's time you got to know the real foot soldiers of the revolution, yeast. Fighting from the depths of the fermentation tank, billions of these tiny, practically invisible cells are heroically laying down their lives to magically turn sugars into alcohol, but it doesn't stop there. From Belgian Trappist to Pilsen Lager, American Ale to Bavarian Weizen, yeast has the power to change the flavours, aroma and complexion of your beer in an instant. Q Unleash the Yeast, a mega mini series of four beers brewed to the same ABV using a blend of Centennial and Amarillo hops and a backbone of Paleo, Munich and Caramals, each created to worship a different yeast strain. Come and give these craft beer martyrs the recognition they finally deserve. So pretty cool there. Standard Brewdog bottle cap. I forgot to point that out to you. But let's get this guy out and into the glass then. I'm looking forward to trying this final one in the series here. As I mentioned to you, a 6.3% Pilsner or maybe an Imperial Pilsner. I'm not quite sure. But there you are. There's your opening there. Nice and smoky on the opening. So let's get this guy out and get it into the glass here. It smells very, very fresh on the opening there. It's coming out just quite a nice colour, actually. I'll just sugar it up and get the last little bit into the glass there. It's very bright, actually. I thought this guy would perhaps be a little bit lighter than that, but we'll soon see. Just check that everything's back in back in place there. My camera was being a little bit funny. But yeah, there we are. So as you can see, I'll just bring the light over so you can get a proper idea of the colour of this beer. It's a very sort of bright orange, this one. It's quite hazy actually, but I think maybe you can see my fingers. No, you can't. I'm just looking at the camera. You can't see my fingers as I put them on the back of this one. It's got a solid finger. of a, It's a slightly off-white head, maybe just very slightly beige or more of a cream colour if you like. But it's a very nice looking beer. I think it's starting to clear up a little bit now. This is this one is definitely a little bit less opaque than the other ones in the series. This one is definitely clearer, I would say. There's just a little bit of carbonation kind of going up to the top of the or the bottom of the head, sorry, there. But it looks a really, really nice beer. As I mentioned to you, an Imperial uh, Lager, if you like, or an Imperial Pilsner beer. So in terms of the aroma here, nice and fresh. Some nice sort of grassy hops kind of jumping out at me on this one smells like a very sort of fruity and aromatic pilsner actually you do get some of these german uh, sort of pilsner beers in the brew pubs over there that smell like this it reminds me a lot of that actually when i was over there but yeah the aroma there's definitely a sort of caramel white bready biscuity malt base in there as you would expect there's definitely a sort of grassy fruity character to it though i think just a little bit of grapefruit and definitely some kind of pine needle character in there Citric with the more prominent fruit, I think, is the citric, but there's a little bit of grapefruit and just a tiny little hint of the kind of pine resin there. But it's the grassy and citric flavours on the hop end of the beer that are the ones showing up more prominently. But yeah, a very, very nice. Very, very nice smell in beer. It smells very, very fresh. So let's give this guy a taste and see how we get on here. That's really nice actually, has a really nice kind of caramel biscuity malt base to it, it's really, it's really nice actually, I think this might be the best one in the series so far. But yeah, I think I've got the temperature of this guy just right, it was sitting for about 5-10 minutes after I took it out of the fridge to actually start the review, but temperature of this guy is just right. But a slightly toasted bready malt base in there. A little bit of kind of sweetness from the sort of yeasty character in there too. And the caramel is quite noticeable as well actually. Just the underlying caramel that sits at the back of the tongue. It's quite, there's a good bit of floral and aromatic character just on the top of the mouth and on the front of the tongue actually that's sticking out to me.
there's definitely a sort of it's a more mild thing than you would normally get with an American paleo but there is definitely an element of the kind of pine resin in there there's definitely some element of that to the aromatic character but yeah a really nice toasted white bread malt base in there a nice yeasty, yeasty sweet character to it with underlying caramel and then the hop part of the beer is actually quite complex it's hard to pick up all the different flavours in here just on first go but yeah it's a little bit orangey there's some nice sort of other lemon citrus flavours in there too but mainly orangey on that count there is just a, a very faint hint of grapefruit and like I say in the sort of floral and grassy aromatic, ca aromatic character sorry I think there is just an underlying pine resin element to it there nothing at all like what you'll find in American Paleo it is very mild and it blends very well with that sort of floral and aromatic kind of spicy bouquet thing that goes in there It does remind me a lot of the, uh, the some of the Hellas beers that I had in Heidelberg in Germany, although it is a lot less lemon citric than, than these ones were, but it has, it's a very, very well done Pilsner in that sense, actually. But I like this one. This is a lot better than the fake lager you get from Brewdog, in my opinion. That beer, I always like the 77 lager. The fake lager is okay, but it's nowhere near as good as 77 or this one, in my opinion. But yeah, very, very nice beer, this one. I, I always enjoy a, very, a good Pilsner or Hellas beer, if you like. But in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, definitely light body, a slightly oily character to it, but just a moderate level of carbonation. It's a typical sort of Pilsner Hellas level of carbonation. It's just right. That's all you really need to say about it. But it's got a nice hoppy bitterness, that little aromatic spicy mouthfeel to it at the end there. And then at the end you've just got just that little bit of dryness that kind of complements that quite well. It's a perfect, it's, in my opinion, this guy is a perfect Pilsner beer. A lot of people don't like the Pilsner beer in comparison to the APAs, but I personally think the sort of Hellas and Pilsner beers, if they're done properly, they're very, very underrated styles of beer. And that's come and I mean that's something I picked up from actually living in Germany and having the Hellas and all the different choices of Hellas and Pilsner beer. So I'm very picky with that particular style of style of beer these days. But I think this one is done very well and it's certainly a lot better than the fake lager that's in the Brewdog core range in my opinion. As I said but in the start of the video, it's a shame that this beer probably will only be brewed in one batch. But if you want a very, very good Pilsner beer that's got a nice hoppy kick to it at the end, this is definitely one you want to check out. The yeasty characters in this one is quite interesting. That's what I should also comment on. It's got a nice sort of nice kind of white bready sweetness to it and it's very well done and as I've said in this series people have criticized it that the fact that the beers, the elements that of flavor that you would expect from all the different styles of beers are a little bit pushed back and the idea with this was to allow you to taste the yeasty character and get used to that. People have criticised them for sort of not going not going all out on the certain sharper parts of the flavour but Brewdog wanted to give you the yeasty character and that's what they've done in my opinion so this series is a success in that sense but overall with this particular beer I would say if you want a really nice Pilsner beer do this one and it's a shame that it is only brewed once. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review and I've not been sort of rambling away to you. As I say, I really like this beer. Hopefully they'll replace the fake lager with this one. Fingers crossed. But we'll need to see about that in the near future. But thanks again for watching my beer reviews. As always, please let me know in the comment section your own thoughts on this beer. I do have some other random Brewdog ones, but I think my next step with Brewdog will be to re to go on and review the, the uh, IPA is Dead 2014 range and just get through all the different four packs I had. But thanks again for watching my beer reviews. As as always comment and let me know your own thoughts on this beer below and like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff I thank you all for your support over the last 240 or so videos that I've done there will be more beer reviews for you to come in the near future and I'll catch you on one of those cheers